I was very fortunate to be born and raised right here at Sunset Beach and water was just a part of my life from the very beginning. Some of my earliest memories with my parents is being in the water and the tide pools down here and getting pushed into little white water waves. It was just kind of bred into me and I guess I had the personality type that really took to it. I always enjoyed surfing and I never thought I would be a professional surfer. And the thing about the North Shore is that as far as the surfing world goes, nothing goes unseen here. And I just kept surfing the waves that I liked, which ended up being bigger waves than most of my peers were surfing. My first time being out in 20 foot surf where I seen a good 35 foot face, maybe 40 foot face come in, I was 15 at Waimea. I got caught inside by it too. I nearly myself. What really got me hooked onto the idea of becoming a professional surfer and making a living out of it was the first trip I got to take on somebody else's dime. Definitely the fear factor in big wave surfing, it's, you can definitely pay the ultimate price for what you're doing. To me it's one of the most pure accomplishments that I could have. It can't be misinterpreted or spun a different way. Not even talking about actually riding wave, just existing in the ocean, paddling around. When the surf's that big and there's that much water moving, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of experience and knowledge and very good physical conditioning. The hardest thing for people to do and to learn in big wave surfing is to just hold their line and sit there because when these giant sets come, it gets in your head and it looks like they're gonna break outside of you but you really have to be way up under it. Even after all this time surfing big waves, to me, when I'm looking down a giant 25 foot wave, it doesn't look like I'm gonna make it half of the time. You just have to head down, force yourself to go, and just stay on your board to see what happens. Gone are the days of of getting credit for dropping in on a big wave and just going straight and getting mowed down by the white water. We want to actually perform and do things that hopefully haven't been done and, and be at that cutting edge of progress in big wave surfing. The whole time when I was a, a baby, still in diapers with my life jacket on, getting pushed into little white water waves on the surfboard, I was learning how to dive too. And my dad, he'd drag me around, I'd hold on to this buoy. So I spent a good part of my developmental years diving by myself. I got to develop my approach completely on my observations, and I didn't have a lot of outside influence. Just watching fish, spending basically years of my life with a mask on watching animals interact with each other and how they interact with me and how they view me and the mental challenge of being able to hold your breath, uh, the physical challenge of expanding your lungs and having your body more efficiently use oxygen and also add in the fact that you're hunting at the same time. I feel that free diving and spearfishing complement surfing, especially big wave surfing. There's similarities and differences, but I think both of them are really good for training your mind. The coolest experience I've ever had diving was the first time I touched a, a great white shark and got on its dorsal fin and it actually swam around with me on it. Was, that was like, it was like blindingly surreal experience I never thought I'd have. Well, I love the ocean because to me it's pure wilderness and I think humans need to have that in their life. You need something that's not man-made, you need something that's natural. We need that connection with nature. It's, it's a part of us that's deep in there. But I see people who are like so stuck in their day-to-day -day lives and their, their entire life is lived within this grid that other humans have made. They're just running in the maze, you know, the rat in the maze. And we have a giant ocean out there that you can go and access and have these real experiences. I, I just highly recommend it to everybody. Obviously, if the oceans go, we go. It's by far the largest part of our planet. Native cultures that had sustainable plans for harvesting and, and maintaining and being custodians of the ocean. And we have to seriously look at that and use some self-control. There's a lot of things on this planet that are worth more than money. The ocean's one of them.